Yeah. Just, uh, yeah, just in general, defending my faith, defending the offensive, my faith, just, uh, yeah. 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 Well, I, 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 the only way to do that, bro, is by study. Lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of study. Like, I don't know in what context you're imagining doing this kind of evangelism. Yeah. But can I can I encourage you? Don't try to be a street preacher. Can I beg you? Don't go and do street preaching. Right? What what good evangelism looks like in today's world, right? Is get a table, put a sign in front of it, get some good Christian books. Yeah and talk to people, yeah. have conversations with people, yeah. invite them to ask questions, answer their questions, engage with their arguments, yeah. and offer Christianity as an alternative yeah. that is better than the religion of humanity, yeah. that is better than Islam, yeah. that is better than Hinduism or Sikhism or materialism or atheism, yeah. you know? Yeah. That, that, that's the kind of evangelism I, I want to encourage you to embrace, yeah. you know? Yeah. 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 I think I think a lot of it is that a lot of Christians in our churches we don't encourage people to have firmness and conviction in belief. Yeah. And and so a lot of Christians, when they come up against an obstacle, because they've not been taught solidity of the soul, and because they've not been taught the the virtues of manhood, they suddenly doubt themselves when someone asks them a question, or they suddenly doubt themselves when they give the right answer. Yeah. But the person just goes, oh, no, I don't understand. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You've got to have firm emotional uh, conviction and firmness yeah. in, in our beliefs and in, in, in what we say as Christians. Yeah. Right? Uh, so that you're not just put off because someone throws out a clever argument. Yeah. Or you're not put off because you give the right answer and then someone goes, oh, I don't know what that means. It's yeah. yeah, it's not the reaction you want to hear. In, in, for instance, in this park, no one, camera off camera. You're happy to be on camera? Either way. Yeah. Come, come and stand here, bro. So, in, you know, in terms of, in terms of um, how we do evangelism, in this park, for instance, I encounter people that are deliberately obtuse all the time. You give a perfectly good analogy that seven atheists, three agnostics and four Christians all understand, but then the Muslim goes, oh, I don't know what you mean. You know, because they're being obtuse, because they're trying to win an argument. And, and sometimes you've just got to recognize that is what is happening. But that doesn't mean that what you're saying is wrong. So my advice to you is study apologetics. Don't become a street preacher. Get maybe some Christians from your fellowship or some Christians from around you. Set up a table with a sign, get some good second-hand books and speak to people. Speak to people, hand out books and talk with people. Don't, don't just hand them out like confetti. Have conversations and give a book to a person that you've spoke to for a while. Yeah. 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 Well, my, my other thing is, my, my other advice to you is, if you see a Darwa table, don't approach it. If you approach a Darwa table, all that you do is you make it easier for other people to approach that table. That's all you're doing. Well, you're not going to convince that person, right? So, so my advice to you is rather than go and approach their table, set up your own. Contend for the public space. The reason why Christians aren't making an impact in our culture is because many of our leaders are soy boys and they don't teach a muscular Christianity that contends for the public space, that contends for the public dialogue, that contends for the political agenda, that contends for the economy. And as Christians, we have to embody the kind of spiritual life, the kind of spirituality that seeks to transform and change society. Politically, economically, socially, culturally. Christians agree with that the moment you say, let's do it charitably. But Christians suddenly get nervous 
and have a wet fart the moment you talk about doing it politically. You know? But the, the, the progressives have demonstrated that if you control the schools, you control what people think. The progressives have demonstrated that if you control the courts, you control what people are allowed to say. The progressives have demonstrated that if you control the police, you can control people's words. Christians need to become savvy to all of this. Any, any other? Yeah, absolutely. It's about embodying a more muscular Christian faith. Which is, which is what Christianity was before the Enlightenment. You know? Yeah. So you just study, yeah. Study and practice, study and practice. And never, never invest your ego on an argument. Never say to someone, well, if you can prove this, I'll become a Muslim. Or if you prove this, I'll stop being a Christian. That's childish behavior. Don't gamble your soul. You're not that clever. Right? You're just not clever enough to gamble your soul. Yeah. You're either a Christian and it's you jealously possess it or you're not. No, it's so true. I think, I guess for me, it's uh, maintaining that zeal as well. I feel like, yeah. I, I think sometimes I sound stupid, you know, I go too much with feelings and that affects the whole thing. Yeah. It's like, you know, like, you know, study, research up on things, um, see witness of where I can. Yeah. Um, well, firstly, don't don't stick me on any kind of pedestal. I know I've got my own pedestal to stand on, but don't you be putting me on any pedestal. All the sins that you struggle with, I struggle with. So just remember that. You're speaking to someone who struggles with all the same sins you do. Right? I'm a man. I'm single, just like you. I struggle with all the same sins that you do. So don't be putting me on any kind of pedestal. Right, but saying that, what I would be saying is you need to find continuously new and different ways um, to connect with your faith, to connect with your identity as a Christian, right? To make your faith real to yourself, right? And part of that, I would say, is to live out your vocation as a Christian, to, to discern and to discover what God is calling you to. And what God is calling you to is not necessarily to be something involved in church. God can call people to be involved in business, can call people to be soldiers. He can call people to be involved in art. He can call people to be involved in theatre. Like, as Christians, any godly activity can be a, a Christian vocation. But you must discern what God is calling you to, and then you must see it as a holy ministry that through your vocation, you grow closer to God and you transform the world into the kingdom of God and that you strengthen the church through your vocation. And you must cultivate psychologically through the use of imagination, through the use of prayer, inner, inner conviction and strength. You know, that's like imagining yourself in situations where people are calling, bullying you or attacking you because of your faith, but you just resolve yourself not to give in. And you cultivate this mindset of firmness of belief. It, it, and the Bible is clear, we're called again and again and again to be firm in our beliefs. But the church never teaches it, the church never cultivates it, the church never helps Christians to practice it. Do you want to talk about off stuff off camera? Um, yes, absolutely. Shall we get a cup of tea? Yeah. All right. Let's go get a cup of tea if you want to talk off camera.